and uh, at the time it was a taboo for a Saudi to a Saudi male to be a cantor. Yeah. But my father was somewhat encouraging. He said, "If you think it's a need, and go ahead, do it." So that pushed me, and uh, I guess uh, I gotta. I mean, that's something in the house that pushes me forward. Hello and welcome to the Main Man Show. We are coming to you from our studios in Riyadh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And today we have a very renowned Saudi surgeon with us today. We're going to try something a little different. We have Dr. Ahmed Al Badr. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here, doctor. Thank you for hosting me. All, All right. right. Okay. And I'll promise I'll take it easy on you. And like I said before <laughs> we started recording, this is a conversation, not an interview, right? Sure. You can edit uh, some. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So you're you're a renowned surgeon who is practicing pelvic reconstructive su- surgery. Right. What are some of your personal achievements in this field for me to call you a renowned surgeon? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I was the first trained uh, a pelvic uh, reconstructive surgeon, um, first Saudi to re- receive that training and started the program here in Saudi. Yep. Uh, I started the first uh, program for treating women with pelvic floor dysfunction mm-hmm. at, King Fahad Medi- at King Fahad Medical City in Riyadh. Mm-hmm. And that was the first uh, center to take care of women with pelvic floor dysfunction. Uh, Subsequently, we developed the first uh, fellowship for training obstetrician and gynecologists in this field. All right. And uh, so that was the, uh, and we graduated the first fellow in, in the kingdom. Mm-hmm. from our center so and uh, now i pass it on to my uh, uh students not students but my juniors to yeah. me yeah and okay and i retired and i left them they, all right they both. okay and how many juniors have you passed this knowledge to oh i don't know uh, over the years i continued to treat uh um to educate students uh residents uh teach in uh, uh, different uh, hospitals, yeah. uh, conferences. Mm-hmm. So if you had to give me a number, like, a, <laughs> it doesn't have to be an actual number, but like a, in your head you think like, hey, I must have done, like if someone asks me how many stories I've written, right. I know I've written over 100 stories, okay. so I'd say like 100, 150, but I'm sure there's even more if I, if sure. I sit there and actually count. So okay. what's, what's, what's your number? Okay, well, uh, let, me, let me tell you. Now, my main thing is doing surgeries. All right. So this is the main thing. For, TV, okay. uh, for I mean, for conferences, for instance, I, when I last counted was like 170. That was like eight years ago. All right. I, I think that was when I stopped counting. Eight years ago. Yeah. Because okay. that was like, that, those are like real conferences, national, mm-hmm. international, and so on. So, so uh, 180 and, conferences. Uh, Right? That was then. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. All right. Yeah. So, and then, so at, I don't know, another eight, 80? Another 80? Say 20 conferences. I don't know. So, 200 conferences altogether. Okay. Maybe. All right. Okay. Yeah. That's the conferences and that's knowledge transfer. How about surgeries? Surgeries, lots, thousands. Uh, thousands? Thousands. All right. Yeah. And, uh, and how long does usually one, one of these surgeries take? It could be as short as half an hour, or it could be three, four hours. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Right. Depends on you know. Depends the, how much uh, she needs, how much there is. How to, much work is, work is needed to it on? Yes. All right. Okay. And uh, you have a uh, you you created a uh, uh, an organization called uh, Bailisan. So, uh, what's the story behind creating Bailasans, and and then what are your future plans for it to revolutionize women's health here in the kingdom? Well, Bailasan is is uh, was created with an idea that there uh, are herbs that are effective in in treating women. Mm-hmm. However, they're not utilized. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're not known to the manufacturers in the West or whatever, mm-hmm. but they're not available to all women. For instance, we know murra is very useful yeah. to women. What is that in English, by the way? Murra. Yeah, murra, murra in Arabic. Yeah, murra in, in Arabic. Mer. Same mer. thing? Mur. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. M-Y-R-R-H. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
So they've been using it for a thousand years. My mother, our mothers, grandmothers were using them. Mm -hmm. Now there are studies that yeah. have shown that they're quite effective in treating women after surgeries, after deliveries. They improve healing, reduce pain. They, and with that, they're not available. You have to go find them at uh, Latar. Yeah, Paris. like the, the you know, what people are they called? Sells herbs. I don't know. People who sell herbs yeah. and Herbers. spices. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, like uh, I'm, oh god, why I'm trying to remember the name. Like, anyways, yeah, well, spice, uh, spice, spice men. markets, <laughs> the spice, spice markets. markets yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> okay, name, right? all right. Yeah, so you buy them from there. You have to make sure that they clear. They're they're not contaminated, mm -hmm. and then you need to find the right dose, and then you need to sink it for a couple of hours until. It's soaked, and you cannot just put it, and it's, uh, it dissolves. Yeah. So all that, I mean, and you don't know the right dose and so on. So I, I thought, okay, so this is one, just one example. There mm -hmm. are, like, I have 20 examples of other stuff that we could produce. So I thought, okay, let's do this. Right. This is useful to women. And uh, so I started working on it when I... When I retired from my official government work, mm -hmm. I decided that, okay, now I have so I cannot just sit, sit around. So mm -hmm. I dedicated my time to organize. So by Lisa, now it is a product. Mm -hmm. um, now it's available in the market uh, in many places. It's the first one, the first production, the first uh, uh, product is... Uh, a wash, an intimate wash mm -hmm. that contains extracts of myrrh and extracts of lavender. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, so you, you you took traditional <laughs> herbal remedies and revolutionized it and reintroduced it as you know, you know, modern packaged, packaged, cleaned, yeah, yeah, and uh, the herbs that are traditionally used, mm -hmm. but have shown in some studies that they're effective. That they're effective. Yes. And when you did this, did you know what? What was what? Was, like you know, like to get patents and license and mm -hmm. everything. Like, did people think oh. you you're out of your mind? Yeah. Like to, to go back to you know, they're like saying <laughs> we progressed in medicine, right. and now you're taking us back to the archaic ages with your herbs and, <laughs> and stuff, right? No, well, no? well, not really. No, a mm -hmm. lot of people were so excited and uh, they loved it, and yeah. it's now it's sold very well. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem we had is with patenting and with licensing. All and right. That was the main problem. No. But no, acceptance was really good. All right. So what was the challenge of getting a patent for it? Oh, uh, well, I mean, registering as, uh, you know, the registration system, we have you either register as a medication or you register as uh, like an herb supplement, okay. non-medical. Herbal supplement. Yes, right. non-medical, mm -hmm. uh, which you should not write any medical claims. Okay. So you produce, either, uh, if you want to go to the medical, you have to ha you do trials and so on, which takes yeah. 10 years or so. Uh, registration in this case takes two to three years, perhaps. Mm -hmm. The other side, if you're registering as an herb, it mm -hmm. goes a bit quicker. It took us about uh, a couple, uh, I don't know, six months or so. All right. But, but then claims about writing what you should use it for, Whatever you write something, they said, no, 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 this is not acceptable. No. Okay. <laughs> so, so what to write on how it's used, that was a big challenge. Okay. And then when we produced it and start selling it and we had to stop because we used medical claims. So the, the, the issue of, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, making it available and writing what's can, what can be used, that was yeah. a big challenge. That was a big challenge? Okay, so it, is a, it is a challenge. All right, so how did you overcome it? Because you had to take out any medical claims that it's in uh, and how it's used. So yes. how, how did you get it, uh, how did you get your point across to the person who, you know, who would buy these, like how to use it and what it cures? Like, it, it, it is a challenge because yeah. you need to remove the medical uh, claims mm -hmm. uh, and then you want to explain that it can be used in this and studies have shown that it works right. for this. But we cannot say that. So mm -hmm. uh, uh, what I do is I say mer, like mm -hmm. in, in, my, in my social media accounts, I would say mer is, is good for this and this and this. Mm -hmm. And then there's this uh, wash which has mer. Okay. So and then that's it. So you like put one, one, one and one together. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the, the reason I was asking you if mm. what, what mer is called in, in English was, do you, do you know what mluchi is called in English? You've no. had mluchi? Yeah. I, I heard the right. name. I forgot. I, 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 I researched it, by the way, because yeah. I wanted to know what it was called. It's called Jews Malo. Jews Malo. Yeah, Jews Malo. Okay. So it's yeah, completely it's two different things, right? Yeah. Anyways, that's that's that's, that's the beautiful thing okay, about I'll language, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send it to you so you can see. Oh, okay. So yeah, yes, I'm, I'm very good at research. <laughs> All right. And uh, so, so how do you see what you do today, like your your work? How do you see it triggering health and well being under the Kingdom's Quality of Life program? Um, now, what I I mean, my specialty treats quality of life. Mm -hmm. It does not treat cancer, for instance, or yeah. uh, uh, like a disease that needs to be treated, like diabetes or something. Mm -hmm. So we focus at uh, improving the quality of life of women who have pelvic floor dysfunction. Okay. Now I do as well cosmetic uh, um, reconstructive, surgery. reconstructive surgery. That as well, yeah, I mean, it, it has uh, a big impact on, on women's uh, quality of life and yeah. their perception. So that, I mean, this is something that we could contribute to the, to the, uh, the vision that we're heading to. And uh, I think we can offer, uh, uh, as well as we're offering to our population, to the uh, people who are visiting or mm -hmm. tourists who are coming yeah. to the country. Yeah. So have you, have you, have you had uh, patients from outside the country? Have you had people contact you? Let's say, let's not call them patients. Mm -hmm. Contact you from outside the country uh, asking about you know, the products that you provide and the medical advice that you, you provide? I do regularly get patients from the Gulf. Yeah. Regularly. Mm -hmm. From Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, Qatar. So regularly I do get patients from Bahrain. Yeah. Um, but people from other countries, they've contacted me. They tried to come. They they still could not come mm -hmm. from Iraq, from uh, uh, Syria. Okay. They they wanted to visit. They wanted to come and do the surgery. All right. But uh, I think per, uh, and with the changes in the tourism visa requirements, perhaps mm -hmm. they they would be able to. Yeah. Have you had any non-Arab country, uh, you know, individuals reach out to you? Anyone from a non-Arab country? Yes. Okay. Canadian, but living here. All right. Yeah, she searched and she came to me and uh, yeah, her okay. her husband was a uh, as a doctor was a consultant in a different hospital. Mm -hmm. So she searched and she came to me. All right. Yeah, I mean, and I do a lot of. I mean, uh, not a lot, but I mean, I do quite a good number of uh, foreigners as well living here. Okay. Uh, uh, like an embassy from embassies from uh, mm -hmm. people who expect who are living here. Yeah, and yeah. and what was their first impression of, of using uh, say herbal supplements well they, they've used uh, they've, I mean they've utilized my medical services as a surgeon mm -hmm. uh, so that they were really appreciated of, okay. of, of like uh, being a Saudis doctor mm -hmm. uh, so who's leading in the field of, of, of you know pelvic reconstructive surgery, surgery true yeah. yeah and in terms of uh, the use of, of Baylasan for instance we're mm -hmm. shipping uh, throughout the world and there are people from Europe, from uh, yeah. Canada, who order them, and they like them. All right. But but they're Arabs. They're not foreigners. All right. Yeah. They, okay. So the foreigners, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Are we getting through to them? And and which which country shows the most potential? I guess for you, like which orders Sa have come in? I from? mean Saudi. Saudi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean uh, Saudi aside from Gulf. Saudi. I want to. I, I, what, 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 what I want to see is. Mm. Is your social media platforms getting your, you know, your cause across to non-Arab countries? Different. Because these are herbal remedies that we use in the Arab world. Right. So it's, it's nothing new. It's, it's not hard to sell people out. Okay, sure. But, like, how, <laughs> how, how did you do with, uh, the, with the expat community, sure. let's okay. say? Well, uh, listen, most of my followers are Arabic speakers. So right. they are people from different places on their own earth. In Europe, uh, South America, Canada. So there are people that follow me, but they're Arabs. Mm -hmm. So they they uh, they do order that, and they're interested in in such treatments. Now, for foreigners, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I haven't even aimed at doing it in English or trying to aim those population. I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe. Have you tried? Maybe, Did you think about no, doing it? No, I thought 
we, I mean, the people who are going to buy it, I'm not going to be able to give, uh, to be able to supply enough to cover. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The so uh, why go? Why go all out, right? Yeah, I go out and okay. try to convince them, and um, maybe the next phase, right? Perhaps. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, so aside from sitting bored at home and you, you know, and, and just not being able to sit still and do nothing. What challenges did you face switching from being a doctor to an entrepreneur? Well, now I haven't switched a hundred percent. I am still doing you have some one surgeries. Foot yeah, in, in I keeping, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I did the same. So I could be like three or four feet. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. so as a surgeon, no, I, I got, just got two feet, man. Two feet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, the two, I moved them around. All right. Well, so one, one hat is as a surgeon. So I do work as a part-time, mm -hmm. like twice, three times a week uh, in a clinic. All right. Do what I used to do, but in less uh, volume. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is working on this project, uh, trying to introduce new products and also improving what we have now right. and working on marketing and so on, which is a little bit difficult switching from being a physician throughout, yeah. th physician, researcher, educator, mm -hmm. to coming, dealing with commercials and trying to get licensed. Get messaging for, and press releases and social media posts. I mean, with my job in comms, <laughs> the, I found that the two most difficult uh, people to work with are doctors and engineers because you guys want things in a certain way and we're more creative driven. <laughs> so we're less creative. Huh? Well, I wouldn't say you're less creative, but you're more of. Yeah, this is the way me, it should take, be. Take, take me through the journey. This is the way it should be. Well, yeah. I'm like, no, 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 it doesn't work that yeah, way. Yeah. There, it's not. It's not a one size fits all. Yeah, doctors <laughs> yeah. are like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even when doing business, when mm -hmm. they go to the private part and they want the private business, I mean, yep. uh, it's usually difficult to to work with, together yep. because they have the mind that they do they use in 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 the hospital mm -hmm. treating patients, and then they come there, they want to do things in order and their order and what they think is right, and then it's right, but. Yeah, the, the uh, business life is outside. I mean, from yeah, it's I mean, different. But what is right? Right is a perception. You know, your your idea of what's right could be my idea of what's could be better. True. See? Yeah, so. But 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 the <laughs> outcome that I see is that it doesn't work. The organization yeah. that they're trying to work on. It when you get work. out of the field of medicine, there's a gray area. <laughs> there's <laughs> a lot of gray area. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I'm trying to tell you. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> now I learned. <laughs> okay. And as, and aside from marketing, uh, you know, and. PR and all that. Okay. Well, what what other difficulties did you face? Like uh, any admin difficulties? Yeah, and, just registrations you know? are were a bit difficult. Now everything is smooth through like uh, with 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 all the digital Digi services. Yeah, everything is digital here, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's uh, that's easy. Yeah. All right. And apart from that, I do just some like uh, traveling lifestyle uh, type of. Uh, so I attend like events. Uh, Mm -hmm. So whatever happens, I try to catch up with uh, and uh, live my life. Yeah. Not as before uh, 2019, where I used to <laughs> almost live in the hospital. All right. Yeah. You decided to slow down a bit. Slow down. Okay. What made okay. you want to slow down? Well, what made me, I developed lung cancer. Okay. And with that, I thought, okay, maybe it's time to think of what I should do in my life and I mm -hmm. you know you can start thinking of many things and with treatments and so on I had to slow down but then later on I said okay well this is maybe a message to slow down and not yeah. you should makes you reevaluate your priorities true okay fair enough exactly yeah. and um, so it's what when you do speaking opportunities and you go to conferences and where do you go to what, what kind of conferences and what kind of events do you attend the conferences are usually medical, um, some in Saudi, uh, mm -hmm. most in Saudi actually. Yeah. I, I get invited to speak at specialty. So like I was at the uh, dermatology conference uh, a couple of months ago and there is one coming also as well, uh, a couple of uh, weeks uh, uh, coming. Mm -hmm. um, they all ask me to talk about my specialty, mm -hmm. what relates uh, in relation to dermatology. Yeah. Uh, I do uh, like uh, also subspecialty um, uh, presentations, Dubai, uh, Turkey, yeah. uh, London, uh, all right. 
Greece. So uh, that's a that's a, that's a international, international level of knowledge transfer. Right? True. So why do you think that's important for you? I think it's very important to first thing to put Saudi on the map. All right. Uh, second, uh, transfer the knowledge that I have. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I, I'm working on a project that and I want to show how I do my surgeries, which I cannot teach one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. I want to teach a lot of people. Large so group. I'm, yeah, so I'm working on a project that is coming soon mm -hmm. that teaches people how to do surgeries the way that I learned and I've been doing for the past 20 years. Okay. And so... I yeah. And, and how uh, how are you going to, uh, you know, basically transfer that knowledge to a large number? What, what platform, what tactics are you going to use? Um, I prefer not to talk about details. <laughs> hey, I'm going to come back in your show and, uh, All right, okay. and uh, well, give us, announce. Give us a okay, little sure. taste at least. How about that? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Without giving so us too it, much So it's, it's like a, it's a, an online video academy. All right. Training academy. Yeah. So uh, I get a lot of requests to people to train with me mm -hmm. in the clinic, but I cannot, uh, I mean, help everybody. All right. So uh, I think that's uh, uh, something important that we pass on knowledge mm -hmm. and uh, keep the, uh, I mean, uh, keep the knowledge to others, All document right. it and have it there for... Interesting. Yeah. So... Aside from, you know, your contributions, mm -hmm. if, if you had to give me uh, two or three examples that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has contributed to the field of medicine, what would it be? You know, since you're, 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 you're in the field, you're a subject matter specialist, you're internationally renowned. All right. What was our, you know, if you had to say, like, we, what individuals have contributed to the advancement of medicine that come from Saudi that come from Saudi. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people, names. You can say people, names, or practices even. Well, I mean, generally speaking, the mm -hmm. doctors in Saudi mm -hmm. are considered the best mm -hmm. in the country. I mean, I'm not the, uh, I mean, not degrading any of the other uh, uh, nationalities. Yeah. But the Saudi doctors, I mean, when you go and see a Saudi doctor, you know that you're in a good hand. Yeah. Because they're well trained and they're very good. Mm -hmm. uh, and that what we what the Canadians saw when we were working there. Mm -hmm. So when we worked there, they were very happy with us. All right. So a lot of us got uh, offers to stay to after we finished our training mm -hmm. because they want us to stay there. But we came back. So there are a lot of doctors who trained there. They did research. They were very good. That mm -hmm. they that they in their publications are in international journals, and uh, they've contributed quite a bit. Yeah. There are many names that of physicians that are really known. And, yeah. uh, we have a conjoined twins uh, specialist here, Dr. 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 Al 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 of course. Yeah. There's Dr. Hani Najm, who's mm -hmm. uh, in in the States, the right. pediatric cardiology, uh, cardiac surgery, and there are many others. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that just reminds me of, I remember there was a video I saw online a couple of years ago where there was, uh, I'd like to say Qatari, but he went to Switzerland because he had a, a condition on his nose and he went to see the best doctor in the field in Switzerland. Okay. And the doctor was Saudi. <laughs> really? <laughs> so it's like a, interesting. He's like I go to Switzerland to see the best, you know, doctor for this, and I, you know, it's like he's my neighbor, <laughs> Saudi. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I just thought that was interesting and funny and ironic. Wow. <laughs> okay, and so let's 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 delve into Ahmed before he was a doctor. Mm. <laughs> All right. So what 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 um what part of your life growing up or individuals, you know, like friends, family, or, or what have you, uh, took a critical part in you to pursue this career? Uh, well, I mean, 
I, I'm, I'm always, uh, I, I'm, I mean, uh, an adventurous person. I'd like to take challenge. Yeah. Uh, I was looking for, I always look for fields that I have never explored. Mm -hmm. I do like any sports that I hear of, I would go and uh, try it and go, I mean, do my best to mm -hmm. become like a, an expert in it and then i would switch around okay so i kept on i kept doing that and our father was very encouraged of of studying and so on uh, when i asked him that i would do the specialty that and that time that there was nobody not too many gynecologists were yeah. were, were available that, that's the first thing um and uh, at the time it was a taboo for a saudi to a saudi male to be a gynecologist yeah. But my father was uh, encouraging, and he said, if you think it's a uh, need, and go ahead, do it. Mm -hmm. So that pushed me, uh, and uh, I guess uh, I got a, I mean, that is something in the house that pushes me forward. Yeah, and then when, when did you first start practicing? Um, can I decline to answer? Yeah. <laughs> that will show how old I am. Okay. <laughs> 2003. 2003? Yeah. All right, and and uh, if you had to say, how did mm. basically your 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 patients or society or this you know social socially accept having a doctor, a Saudi doctor, yeah, in that field, you know, checking up on them, yeah, as opposed to today, yeah, because you've seen a big shift, very big, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm. Well, in the beginning, I was not accepted in mm. in the in the hospital. I was not accepted in my department. Yeah. And I was not accepted in the mosque. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah, it was it was interesting. Gradually, people in the hospital started to getting me their relatives mm -hmm. and they want me to see their relatives yeah. and so on and uh, it continued to grow. And then um, when the mosque found out you were internationally renowned, they're like <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, you can see that there is a big difference in the past couple, a couple of years in yeah. the in the people how they look. But it was bef even before that, mm -hmm. people knew and they were looking for the best doctor. Then they were coming. Yeah. So they, there was, I mean, despite the hype outside that oh, main gynecologist is not a good thing. No, you should not go to. I've been very busy. Mm -hmm. taking it yeah taking care of uh, people all right yeah. okay and uh when you're not working mm -hmm. what do you do for fun uh i love traveling i okay. love the sea okay so anything beside the sea is is great i'm a sailor mm -hmm. licensed sailor so i go on in the sea uh, for days um i what else i a social person i love seeing my friends, going out with family. You like music, right? I love, well, I like music, yes, mm -hmm. and I like festivals. Yeah. So I like, like to, Middle Beast, you know? Yes, All true. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was there. Okay, so what, the what, kind, what kind of music do you like? <laughs> well, hip hop, uh, hip -hop? yeah. You strike me as a notorious B.I.G. kind of guy. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah, well, which one, who do you like? Well, uh, there is nothing specific. I don't know. If you ask me about names, I don't even remember yeah, yeah. names. Okay. I know music, and then when it's something nice right, well, is played, I would say, oh, this is nice. <laughs> well, do you know the name of any song you like? Uh, well, I'm a, an old... Uh, if we go back, then look at uh, Staying Alive. And oh, God, I love that. The Bee Gees? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Those days, yeah. yeah. I remember and then that. Michael Jackson's uh, yeah. uh, beat it, and uh, yeah. Okay. So that's all. Do you listen to that when you're working? Uh, I listen to like lounge music usually okay. when I'm uh, right. operating. Yeah, right, so something so you cool. Calm the adrenaline down. True. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every now and then there is something different plays, and then I'm. Uh, okay, I'm trying so hard. I move around on the chair. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying so hard to behave with my jokes, because <laughs> I could say I could say a lot of them. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about that. Uh, off yeah. The air. I, I, yeah. Yes. After exactly. That. I, that, and that's 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 actually a good moment for yeah. me to try to wrap up this interview. But before I do, mm. my guests always have to give my audience a personal message. What's yours? My personal message is that live today, do not get sunk in thinking of the past, mm -hmm. and uh, just be uh, creative, be positive, mm -hmm. and just carry on. All right, that's 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 some good advice. And uh, 
before we wrap up this interview, I'd like to thank you again for, for coming here. And to chime into your advice, I'm going to wrap up the episode with my advice. The reason why the rear view mirror is smaller than the windshield in front of you is because it's more important to see to go and see what's in front of you than what's behind you. I like right? it. I like that. Sounds good? <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Right, that's, that's good enough. Thanks. <laughs> Thank Thank and now let's wrap up the interview so we can And then we can start. talk about the yeah, real talk about all the, <laughs> the real talk. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Tune in to the next episode of the Main Man Show. See you later. <laughs> Thank you.